guys! This is Kelvin Miguel, instructor for Math 3 and expert guys tutorial services. Back with another episode for Geometry Online Series. Today, we will dive deeper with the elements of geometry. Last episode, we discussed the building blocks of geometry. And today, we will discuss concepts that relate these building blocks. We would tackle angles, angle relationships, important theorems, and postulates regarding angles. There are a lot of concepts involved, so it would take a lot of focus and cognition, but I'd be discussing techniques that would make it easier for you guys. So before we begin, I would like to further introduce myself. I am Kelvin Miguel, a graduate of Philippine Science High School and a Bachelor of Science in Metallurgical Engineering from UP Diliman. I placed third overall in the board licensure exams for metallurgical engineers. During my college years, I have been a member and held different positions for different student organizations. I'm also a multiple time awardee of the Gawad Parangal sa Natatanging Mag-aaral Award. Moving on to our main topic for this episode, let us first define the different kinds of angles. First of all, Angles can be measured in different ways, but for simplicity's sake, we would be measuring angles in this lecture in degrees. An acute angle is an angle that measures from 0 to 90 degrees. A right angle is an angle that measures exactly 90 degrees. An obtuse angle is an angle measuring 90 degrees to 180 degrees. There are other kinds of angles, but these three are the most common angles you would encounter when solving. We now define our first angle relationship, the adjacent angles. These are angles that share a common vertex and a common ray. Also, by definition, the angles should not overlap. We can see here in the example that the adjacent angles are angle SET and angle TEN. Linear pairs are adjacent angles but with a special relationship where two angles share a non-common ray and their non-common rays are opposite. In this example, angle CLA and angle ALM form a linear pair. The, the non-common rays are opposite ray CL and ray LM points on different directions. When we intersect two lines, we can form vertical angles. The non-adjacent angles formed are the vertical angles. They share the same vertex but does not share a common ray. In this case, we see that angle MON and angle EOY are the vertical angle pairs, as well as angle MOE and angle NOY. Vertical angle pairs have equal measurements. Complementary angles are angles that when summed, they measure exactly 90 degrees. In this example, we can say that angles COR and RON are complements because their sum is equal to 90 degrees. The square in the corner on the vertex is the notation for the 90 degree angle. Supplementary angles are two angles that when summed would equate to 180 degrees. Linear pairs are always supplementary angles but not the other way around. We can see here in this slide that angles FIN and NIE are supplements of each other. Perpendicular lines are two intersecting lines that form four 90 degree angles. In this slide, the perpendicular lines are lines H, I, T, 
and line SIE. Parallel lines, on the other hand, are lines that do not intersect. By notation, we can write line DP is parallel to line KB. There are five simple theorems that would be very useful to memorize. The technique to dealing with angle problems, whether it be in your schoolwork or future entrance exams, is to stick with the definitions and memorize the theories concerning them. Moving on with our discussion, transversals are lines that intersect two lines at different points. When we intersect parallel lines with a transversal, we can derive a lot of angle properties. The first angle property derived from transversals are corresponding angles. These angles are a pair of non-adjacent angles, one interior and one exterior, with equal measurement and on the same side of the transversal. Here we see that angles 1 is the exterior angle because it is an angle formed outside the parallel lines. Angle 5 is an interior angle as it is bound by the parallel lines. There are three other corresponding angles in this example. Angles 2 and 6, angles 3 and 7, and angles 4 and 8 are all corresponding angles. Alternate interior angles are pair of non-adjacent angles bound by the parallel lines and lie on the opposite sides of the transversal line. Angles 3 and 6 and angles 4 and 5 are both alternate interior angles. Alternate exterior angles, on the other hand, are non-adjacent angles that are not bound by the parallel lines and lie on the opposite sides of the transversal line. Here we see angles 1 and 8 and angles 2 and 7 are both alternate in exterior angles. These are additional postulates and theorems which are useful to memorize as it will be applicable in most of the angle problems that would be in entrance exams, problems involving triangles and other polygons, and even in trigonometry. Let's try to apply these theorems in a simple example. Here we see four lines where lines A and B are parallel as well as lines C and D. We look at angles 1 and 9. It is true that angles 1 and 9 are congruent because they are corresponding angles. And our theorem states that corresponding angles are always congruent. Now, we look at angles 6 and 10. We are asked if they are supplementary. Going back to our lecture, supplementary angles when summed would equate to 180 degrees. But by close examination, we see that angles 6 and 10 are congruent because angle 6 is congruent to angle 12 by alternate interior angle theorem, we can say, and by the corresponding angle theorem, we can say that angle 12 is congruent to angle 10. By transitive property, angles 6 and 10 are congruent. For the third question, we look at angles 5 and 12 and determine if they are complementary or if summed up would be equal to 90 degrees. By examination, we can see that angles 
4 and 5 are linear pairs. By corresponding angle theorem, we can say that angle 12 is congruent to angle 4. Since linear pairs are always supplementary, we can say that angles 5 and 12 are supplements and not complements. Therefore, the statement is false. That's it for this episode. I hope you learned a lot about the important theorems and concepts governing angles. These concepts are very important in the sense that it would still apply to problems in physics, trigonometry, and other mathematical problems which make up the majority of general science calculations in entrance exams. I hope I was able to explain everything well. The geometry module, which is given to the enrollees of the enrichment program, offers a lot more examples to help you better understand the problems. It also gives a much more detailed guide on solving problems and techniques in order to answer problems fast and efficiently. Do consider checking that out. Please give the video a like if you enjoyed the content and subscribe to the channel for more educational videos. Also. Follow our Facebook page at facebook.com slash expertguidesreviewcentercatipunan for announcements and schedule of reviews. Do not hesitate to contact us using our posted details if you have questions or any queries. This is Kelvin and see you next time!